College football today from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. It's the number six ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers and the number 18 rated Nittany Lions of Penn State. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Black & Decker's Workmate. When you've got a tough job to handle, it's like having an extra pair of hands. And by Uniroyal. If you want a tough tire at a price that's fair, you want Uniroyal there. The calendar tells us that it's autumn, but summer has lapped over in the Nebraska State Capitol. A beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky. The temperature near 80 degrees. An NCAA record 101st consecutive sellout at Memorial Stadium. More than 76,000 to look on. It should be a very exciting afternoon. What a matchup. Two teams that annually seem to wind up in the top ten. Hello again, everybody. I'm Al Michaels. And, of course, year after year, it's Nebraska and Penn State near the top of the respective AP and UPI polls. This year, Nebraska is still there after two weekends of play. They beat Utah State handily in their opener. Then last week had to squeak by Iowa 24-21. The Nittany Lions have dropped out of the top 10 and into the number 18 spot. They beat Rutgers handily, as expected, in their opener 45-10. to 10. And last week, they were shocked at home in State College, losing to Texas A&M by a score of 27-14. to 14. This is a rivalry that goes all the way back to 1920. However, it's been sporadic. The two schools have not met since 1958. They've met six times overall. Penn State has won four of the six. And today begins the first of the next four years of home-and-home -home series between Nebraska and Penn State. Two heralded coaches, of course, Tom Osborne in his seventh season at the Cornhusker Helm, Joe Paterno in his 14th year as the mentor of the Nittany Lions. In just a moment, Ara Parsegian and I will be back to take a look at the Nittany Lions of Penn State coming into Lincoln to face Nebraska. Remember last year, Penn State finished the regular season unbeaten, and then what cost them the national championship was the close loss in the Sugar Bowl to Alabama 14-7. I'm working with Ara Parsegi today, and uh, you know as well as I do, everybody expected them to beat Rutgers. They did, but what about last week? Are you as shocked as I was as far as the Texas A&M outcome was concerned? Well, Al, I was very much surprised, as the fans were, I suppose, that Penn State lost at home when they were expected to win because they've been perennial winners. Joe Paterno is a real winner. But what really surprised me as a former football coach was a defensive performance of the Nittany Lions. Historically, they've been just terrific. But Curtis Dickey grabbed 184 yards against them, and this is a team a year ago that only gave 54 yards per game and led the nation by giving only 203 yards. That really surprised me. On the other side of the coin, Joe Paterno has lost Chuck Fusina, who was the quarterback of that football team for three years. He was not easily replaced, although the Dale Tate who was beset with injuries for two years, broken collarbone, broken hand, has taken over the helm and is doing a good job. Here he is right now. He's about 6'1", 180 pounds. He's thrown three touchdown passes. One of his favorite receivers, Tom Donovan, 19. As you see, Tate dropping back, delivering the ball here. Donovan has gotten five receptions already this year with uh, about 73 yards. He's a good football player. Now here's a guy we're gonna see a lot of this afternoon, even though Booker Moore will start. This is a freshman running back. He leads the nation in total running, all-purpose running, I should say. Great pass receiver. And even as I said, Booker Moore will start. You are going to see a great deal of Kurt Warner, sensational player. These are two of the finest tackles in the country. I'd match them against anybody. Bruce Clark and Matt Millen. Here you'll see Clark penetrate, create a fumble, number 54 here. And number 60, Matt Millen dive and recover it. There are a couple of great ones. Well, the faces at Penn State may change on the field year to year, but as far as the coach is concerned, that is a stabilizing force. He's in his 14th season as the head coach of the Nittany Lions, and I think you'd have to refer to him as a renaissance man. Football is not the only thing in his life. The erudite mentor of the Penn State Nittany Lions, Joe Paterno. I had a chance to visit with Joe earlier this morning. Joe, as you look at it now, what do you see as the key to a Penn State win today? Well, I think we have to hold on to football for a while when we get it. I think uh, Nebraska plays so well offensively that uh, if we have to be on the field all day defensively, I don't think we can we can do the kind of job we must do if we're going to win. I think we've got to, when we get to football, we've got to keep it for a while, and uh, obviously we're going to have to score some points. Uh, how many? I don't know, but uh, we've got to score... 30, well, we're not going to win it, but if we can just keep the football, I think we can play decent defense. When you normally say keep the football, people think of a ground game 
and eating up a lot of time. What about Penn State today? Will you go to the air? Yeah, we're going to have to go to the air some. I don't think anybody's going to jam the, the ball down Nebraska's throat. They're too big and strong on the line of scrimmage, and uh, we're, we're going to have to going to have to throw the ball uh, how many times I don't know but we'll throw a lot more than we have in the first two ball games Joe good luck to you today thanks a lot Al. some thoughts of Paterno and a look at the Nittany Lions now in just a moment we'll be back and looking to preview the Nebraska Cornhuskers Nebraska has a bit of an unsettled quarterback situation. Jeff Quinn was the starter in the first game, went all the way, looked good. Tim Hager, however, came on last week when Quinn was hurt, and he wasn't having a particularly good day, and Hager led them to their win, come from behind over Iowa. So it's a bit unsettled at the quarterback spot, but one thing about Nebraska, you know they can run. It's the type of team, Harry, that can pile up over 400 yards on any given day. Tremendous offensive football team, and uh, very much like Penn State, the expectations were high for this team. They are 2-0, and all, but you talk to some of the Nebraska fans, they're not happy with the way they won. They haven't won by large enough scores, but the important thing is that they have won. They have had some fumbles. A week ago, they dropped the ball six times and lost at five of them. They have to improve in that area, but they can run the ball. They've averaged 350 yards a game. They do have depth at the running back spot. They've got two outstanding football players. You take a transfer student, here he is, Jarvis Redwine, a really a guy that they say is the fastest football player that's ever played here at the University of Nebraska. We'll see a great deal of him this afternoon. We're told that I am hip will start. He had injuries last week. He had, a, along with a hip injury, also had what they call astrotoe. He is the only Nebraska back that has gained a thousand yards in two consecutive years. And you can see the kind of power, the running ability that he has. And of course, we'll have to wait to see just exactly whether or not he starts because of injuries that he incurred a week ago. Kerry Winemaster is the leader of the defensive unit. He's the nose man. But this is a fine defensive team. Watch him avoid the center's block, run around it, put pressure on the passer, and now spill him for a loss. He's a fine one. We'll watch him this afternoon. Of course, Bob Devaney was the man who built Nebraska into a power. He is now the athletic director, and when he gave up the reins, Tom Osborne took over seven years ago. He had some very big shoes to fill, and certainly he has done that. Osborne in his seventh year, a man who has a degree in educational psychology, and we had a chance to visit with Tom during practice yesterday. Tom, what's your gut feeling after two games? Is this team capable of winning a national championship? Well, I really don't. I think that's one of the big questions we have right now about our football team is just how good we are. I think that uh, we've got pretty good character. We've been behind in both of the earlier ball games that we've played. Uh, I don't know how good Iowa is. They played us an awful tough ball game last week, and I think that probably our game with Penn State is going to tell us an awful lot because uh, we know how good Penn State is. They've got some great athletes, and so if we can play well or win the ball game, I think we've got a chance to have a great football team, but if we don't, uh, it's just hard to say. Briefly, the quarterback situation. Last week, both Quinn and Hager. How does that situation stand right now? Well, we'll probably start Tim Hager because he finished up the game and played well last week. Uh, Jeff Quinn was hurt some, but I believe that he'll be all right this week. He, uh, he gives an added dimension to our football team, Quinn that is, because he's a little bit bigger and a little bit faster. So we may pay, play both of them in the ball game, but uh, Hager will start. Good luck, Tom. Okay, thank you. All right, so that's a look at the Cornhuskers of Nebraska trying to stay unbeaten, looking for their third straight. We'll be right back in Lincoln, Nebraska after this. Stay tuned now for an exciting matchup between two nationally ranked powerhouses, the Penn State Nittany Lions and the Nebraska Cornhuskers, immediately following over most of these ABC stations. College Football Today was produced by Bob Goodrich, directed by Jim Jeanette, Technical Director Les Weiss, Associate Director Vince D'Addario. C Sports presents NCAA College Football. From Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. A great matchup. The Penn State Nittany Lions and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers coast to coast. By Goodyear Tiempo, the all-season radial. It eliminates winter tire changeover. 
and by Polaroid, makers of the One Step, the world's simplest camera and Polaroid's least expensive. Oh, what a glorious day in the Nebraska State Capitol as you look at the Penn State Nittany Lions coming to the near side. In the visiting white, a team that opened at home with a win over Rutgers and then a loss last week to Texas A&M. They flew in here last night. Joe Paterno doesn't like to work out on Friday. Tom Osborne does, and here come the Cornhuskers of Nebraska. And they get their basic salute, 76,000. On hand, a sellout again. They have had 101 consecutive sellouts here in Lincoln, the toughest ticket in town. Penn State ranked 18th, Nebraska 6th in one poll and 5th in the other, ready to do battle for the first time in 21 years. Welcome back, Al Michaels and Ara Parsegian. And basically, after the loss, especially last week to Texas A&M, what do you expect Penn State to do today? Well, I think historically both teams have been well-balanced. They're traditional teams, and they can move the football and pass it. I look actually for Nebraska to try to establish a running game. Their passing game has not been proven. For Penn State, as Joe Paterno said, the personality of this team is not established yet. He's trying to group around, trying to find what to do. He'll run out of the veer, the eye, the sprint pass. But I think the key for the fans to watch is the Penn State defense. If they can play up to the character and the abilities that they have in the past, with the exception of last week, this game is up for grabs. Paterno's had the crying towel out all week long. Osborne doesn't believe a word of it. Penn State in Nebraska, back with a kickoff from Lincoln in a moment. Penn State will receive, and you're looking at the freshman sensation. Kurt Warner leads the nation in all-purpose running after the first two weeks of play. Number 24 is Mike Gooman, who has scored three touchdowns for Penn State in the last two games against their arch rival Pittsburgh. That's Kevin Seibel set to kick off for Nebraska. So here we go in Lincoln on a gorgeous day. Penn State and Nebraska for the first time since 1958. At the one-yard line, it's Warner, the freshman, to the 10, eludes a tackle there, and then is dumped at the 16-yard line. So Warner, a 15-yard run back, and Penn State will take over first down at the 16. A rebuilt and a revamped offensive line. They were severely hurt through graduation losses. Joe Paterno had to move some new people into the offensive line, switch some people as far as positions were concerned. And as yet, Paterno does not really have a fix on how well they have done. He was happy against Rutgers, and obviously not very happy last week. Penn State coming up with split backs. Oft times they work out of the eye, but not this time, and right to the air goes Tate out to the 20-yard line for a pickup of three. Andy Means making the stop, and here's the offensive line for the Lions. LaPointe is the tight end. Kugler is the left tackle. Remember, this is a rebuilt unit, Sean Farrell the left guard. The center is a good one. Robert Jaggers. They have Mike Munchak on the right side at guard. And Irv Pankey, who was a tight end last year, is now the right tackle number 70. Second down and six from the 20-yard line. Draw, and this is Booker Moore for a gain of three. Out to the 23-yard line. Kim Baker, number 41, making the tackle. The backfield. Dale Tate hurt the last two years, the quarterback. There's a good one. Matt Suey, fifth leading ground gainer in Penn State history. Booker Moore gets the start at tailback. Though as Ara explained, we'll see a lot of Warner. Mike Gooman, who can also play running back, is the flanker. Their best receiver is Tom Donovan, the split end. That clock is running. we got nine seconds, eight seconds to get it in play, Al. The clock's in the end zone. They get the playoff. It's Booker Moore. Finds no room over the left side. And Nebraska has held on the first series. Perry Winemaster, number 51, right there. Well, it's been a good time to get that first down. There, the defensive line with Cole Horn. Winemaster in the middle made the tackle. Barnett and Nelson able to stop Penn State on the Lions' first possession. So Jack Amaro, freshman punter, Gets it away, and a fair catch is called for and made at the 47-yard line by Dave Legal. As we look at Nebraska, offensively, the tight end, Junior Miller, Mark Goodspeed, his first year as a starter, number 72, the left tackle. Havacost is the left guard, number 69. There's a man who could be all big eight this year, Kelly Saulfeld. Randy Schleusner is the right guard. 
Dan Steiner at right tackle as Nebraska takes over at its own 47-yard line. And up the middle on the first play goes Andre Franklin, number 39, for a minimal gain of about a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Lance Mel, 56, made the tackle. There's Tim Hager getting the start at quarterback. Andre Franklin, that's the way he pronounces it, Andre. I am hip, Isaiah Moses, the starting eye back. We'll see a lot of red wine, too. And Kenny Brown is a very fine wing back, but has not caught a pass in the first couple of games this year. Tim Smith, the split end, 84. Second down, nine. Hip's first carry of the day. Next, nothing. Bruce Clark, number 54, who won the Lombardi Award last year, which goes to the nation's outstanding lineman or linebacker. And they'll get a lot of calls today, as always. He and Matt Millen, that great tackle tandem. They're up there with Kubin. They have Greg Jones in the middle, Gene Gladys, number 79, outside. And the linebackers and defensive backs. You'll hear a lot about Lance Mel today. Number 56 leads the team in tackles. Third down. They swing it out to Hip, and Isaiah was falling down as he made the catch, and down he goes at the 45-yard line. Great series for the Penn State defense, Al, because they were a little shaken in their confidence a week ago. Nebraska got great field position after that opening, forcing them open, uh, to uh, punt to them. But now the Penn State team has held well, and it's a good sign for them. Both teams holding. We have not had a first down. Tim Smith, the flanker, will do the punting number 84. Suey and Gooman are back deep in the direction of Suey. Matt from the 15-yard line, dropped at the 18. So Penn State will take over in just about the same spot they took over after Warner had run back the opening kickoff. Dave Pappenroth made the tackle. Penn State nothing and Nebraska nothing with 11 minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the first quarter at Lincoln before 76,000 at Memorial Stadium. Good look at Dale Tate, a man who in 1977 was injured early in the year, so he was redshirted. Then last year he missed the entire season. Well, he wouldn't have played much anyway. They had Chuck Trusina back there. Now he's at the helm as Penn State has it first down and 10 from the 18-yard line. Warner, his first carry of the day, cuts inside off a nice block and goes to the 27-yard line. Kim Baker making the tackle. Mike Munchak with a good block, and Warner able to exploit it cutting inside. There are the figures. He's averaging almost six and a half yards a carry. A freshman out of the town of Wyoming, West Virginia. He was recruited by Nebraska. Boy, he put a real move on that time. He faked to the off-tackle play and very quickly escaped to the outside. That's the mark of a great running back. They lined up in the I formation on first down. Now with split backs on second down and two. Tate rolling right, has a little bit of room, and gets out near the 29-yard line. Should have the first down. It's a mix up in the backfield that time. The backs get, were confused. And there was obviously a mental error made. It's nice, though, when you're Paterno to know that you've got a broken play and still you get the first down. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> first down. The initial one of the game at the near hash mark on the 29-yard line. Straight drop. Tate out of the pocket. And out to the 35-yard line. Well, I'll tell you one thing, uh, Dale Tate is showing that he can scramble with the ball. He was flushed out of the pocket. And uh, when you have a scrambling quarterback that can pick up yardage when it appears that he's going to be knocked down for a loss, it's a tremendous asset to a football team. So Tate picks up six. It is second down and four for Penn State at the 35-yard line. They send Mike Gooman wide to the left, Tom Donovan wide to the right. The running backs, Warner and Suey. A roll by Tate. He finds Suey. And he's bumped out of bounds at the 39-yard line. That's very close to a first down. Brent Williams made the stop from the end zone. You see here uh, the rollout by Tate. Just a sprint out behind two blockers. And he drops the ball off to Suey, who's an excellent receiver. 
So he's had great career. He's already caught four passes for prior to this football game, and he's had a great career at Penn State. They started to bring the chains out. The referee, Vance Carlson, said, no, I can tell it's a first down. Just outside the 39, back-to-back -back first downs as Joe Paterno watches his Nittany Lions trying to move out of their own territory. First and 10 from the 39. Tate, everybody covered, and so is he now at the 40-yard line. Well, Paterno said they were going to come out and they were going to have to throw the win today, and he wasn't kidding us. Well, as he said, uh, as I talked to him last night, he just felt like they hadn't gelled together yet. But this, you know, two things have happened thus far in this ball game that are favor Penn State. One, the defense performed well, and I'm sure their confidence was shaken a week ago. And two, they've been able to move the ball outside of their, or they were inside of their 20, to move the ball up where they're not in dangerous field position. This drive started at the 18. It is second down, nine. Again, gets blindsided. And it's incomplete, and we've got a roughing the passer penalty. Flag is down at the 39 yard line. I think there may be an offside or a motion penalty. They were trying a screen that time, and the pressure was so hard. As you watch here, you'll see Tate roll out to his right, and Booker Moore flashes out to his left, and before Tate can get that ball off, he is smothered. You can see the lineman coming out here to set the screen. It looks like they had a little something going. Donovan's getting a block on the wide uh, corner man. Right, yeah, the right call. The official indicating moving his hand forward for a moment. Thought it might be roughing the passer, but he was simply indicating that he did get the throw away. It wasn't a fumble. So the ball at the 40-yard line, offside against Penn State, it's declined. They'll take the down in the play. So it's third down and nine at the 40-yard line. Five and a half minutes into the game. No score in Lincoln. Third and nine. Donovan split left. Boom into the right. Oh, he's Over got him. The he's got a man wide open at the 40-yard line and down to the 19-yard line. Brad Scoville, number 80, went straight down the middle. Beautifully executed play. Nebraska was deployed in what we call a two-deep zone. And the tight end split the zone. The wide people contained the wide men. You see him fake the off-tackle play to Warner. And he hits right over the middle. Scoble, who split the two deep, deep defenders. And a great catch. It wasn't easy. He had to look right over top. Out of the tight end spot, straight down the middle. First down at the 19-yard line on the option. Tate keeps no game. That pass play was 41 yards. Odious Lee makes a stop here. Number 65. So the Nittany Lions, who took over at their own 18-yard line after the Nebraska punt, now at the Cornhusker 19. Second down, 10. Thus far, it's been a real, very fine drive by Penn State. They've taken that ball a long way here. It gets tough down in here, though. Donovan is split to the left. The eye back is Warner. The fullback is Suey. The fake to Warner, they go to the air again. He comes back the other way for Scoville. He juggled the ball, did he stay in? Yes, touchdown! Well, if there's any question in your mind whether or not Tate can throw the football, that drive will erase any question. Great juggling act, ground level from the end zone. As you see, Tate will sprint out to his left, and the tight end crosses from left to right, and he lays that ball in there perfectly. The defender was in front, but the ball was laid in there just right, and watch his feet just inside. His left foot is inside the corner. It is a touchdown. Two things to think about, staying in bounds and catching the football, obviously. So they move 82 yards quickly. Herb Manhart off the soccer team. Now the Penn State place kicker picks it through. 8.23 to go in the first quarter. The Lions have driven 82 yards to lead Nebraska 7-0. 7 to nothing, Penn State. As you look at Anthony Steele's number 33, he is back deep with 22, Kenny Brown. And to kick off, Brian Franco. For Penn State, the Nittany Lions, two big passes to Scoville, including one for the touchdown, leading 7 to nothing. Brown has to back up and down it. He'll take it at the 20 yard line. First and ten. Look at Franco. Let's take a look at the touchdown again. Great catch by Scoble. You watch the tight end at the top of your picture come across, and he throws the ball. It looks apparently to be defense right there, but look at that ball is just perfect. And he gets that foot inside the end zone for a touchdown. 
Great execution on that drive, Al. It was really something. Totally unexpected. Absolutely. Everybody figured that Penn State would come out running. That has not been the case. All right, Nebraska. Its second offensive possession. The quarterback, Hager. He was a walk-on, local boy from Lincoln. I am hip. We've got a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage as hip gets it out to the 23-yard line. Steve Griffiths making the tackle. Isaiah Moses hip. Back-to-back 1,000-yard -back season the last two years. Procedure penalty against Nebraska. Coming up, of course, at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Another good one from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. The Bruins of UCLA with back-to-back -back wins over Purdue and Wisconsin against the unbeaten Buckeyes of Ohio State. There's the man who accounted for most of the yardage on that drive. 41-yard catch over the middle. They get it inside the 25-yard line. Then the great juggling act for the touchdown. First and 15 after the penalty. The ball at the 15-yard line. In the pocket and nearly intercepted and incomplete down to the 29-yard line. Lance Mel nearly picked it off, but for Kenny Brown, who makes the catch, his first reception of the season. So a big break for the Cornhuskers. I don't think he expected to make his first kick, uh, catch this way. All right, here he comes back. Let's watch this. It looks like it's going to be intercepted. Mel had the ball right in his hands, and that could have been catastrophic for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Brown just comes down, a little turn in. And Mill got in a beautiful position. Good second effort there by Brown. Second down and one, and I.M. Hip has the first down. Lance Mell making the tackle, number 56. So Mell nearly making the interception. We'll call his name a lot today. Led the team in tackles last year, leading again this year. A team in which well, Clark and Millen get a good part of the publicity, but Mel does the job very consistently. And as usual, Penn State with a great array of linebackers. It's been that way for years. Jarvis Redwine has come into the game at tailback to replace I am hip with a ball at the 33 first down. Our first look at Redwine to the 36 yard line. Jarvis Redwine out of Inglewood, California, went to Oregon State, didn't like it up there, decided to transfer to Nebraska, had to sit out last season. He is a junior athletically now, so two years to go for Redwine. He's carried the ball 22 times in the first two contests and averaging 8.2. That last play was not anywhere near his average. Second and seven. Hager. To the 46-yard line for a first down. Tim Smith, number 84, 6'2", a senior from Chula Vista, California. Tom Wise was covering on the play. Well, you see Hager just sprints out to the left behind blockers, and he gets a one-on-one -on -one out in the flat. It does show that Hager can throw from one hash mark to the other hash mark. It's the toughest throw in football. Here he is. Smith just turned out, turns out, had leverage on the corner. Tom Wise, and they took it. First down at the 47-yard line. Smith this time is wide left. Brown is sent wide to the right. And they give it to Franklin, the fullback. Bottled up near the midfield stripe. Got about two. It'll be second down and eight. Lance Mill right there. Number 56. He's a number one tackler with 27 hits in the first two games. And he seems to be everywhere. As they say, linebacker you, they've got another one. 22, Kenny Brown getting retaped. Good receiver, but a fellow they weren't throwing to the past couple of weeks. Has made his first catch of the season today. Second down. Hager, incomplete. Pass a little bit high, intended for Scott Woodard, who's come on to replace Tim Smith momentarily. Tom Wise and Giuseppe Harris covering. This is a tough pass to defense. I mean, that ball's just a little high. You can see that he's wide open. If Hager had been on target, they'd had a big gainer. That's Hager's first incomplete pass. He's now three out of four. Remember, in the last two weeks, he'd thrown only one pass and completed it last week against Iowa. Third down and eight. The pitch back for Redwine. 
tackled at the 44-yard line, shy of the first down. Giuseppe Harris, Franco's brother, upended him. I'll tell you, that was a well-executed option play, and it's the same play in a sense that uh, Texas A&M hurt Penn State with a week ago. Curtis Dickey rambled 21 yards for a touchdown on that play, but they forced the punt. It's fourth and a yard and a half, and Osborne will kick it away from the Penn State 44. Tim Smith to oh. boot it. Tom Wise dropping back, oh. single safety too far. That one well into the end zone. And Penn State will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Smith really boomed that one. He should have tried to drop it inside that 10 if he can, but met the pretty good part of his foot, I guess. They say he, uh, Mike Corrigan was telling me yesterday, he's the backfield coach from Nebraska, that he says Smith, number 84, right there as you see on your screen, is the best into the wind kicker that he's ever seen. No wind at all today, but a beautiful day. Temperature, 80 degrees, 525 to go in the period, 7-0 Penn State. Five minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Penn State leading it 7 to nothing. Here in Lincoln, the Cornhusker drive bogging down, and so Penn State will take over at its own 20-yard line. First down from the 20. This is Shuey. Out to the 24-yard line, Kim Baker making the stop. What a rich tradition as far as his family is concerned. His late father, Steve, was an All-American guard. His maternal grandfather, Bob Higgins, was the longtime coach at Penn State. His brother, Paul, was a linebacker last year. And Matt, before the year is over, will put a few notches into the record book as far as he is concerned. Right now, he is the fifth leading all-time ground gainer in Penn State history. Second down and six. Incomplete intended for Warner. Overthrew him a little bit, had him open. He had to throw the ball a little softer and drop it in there. He put a little too much zap on it. So it'll be third down and six. Memorial Stadium in the Nebraska State Capitol, Lincoln. A little bit of red in the stands today. Yeah. Why isn't there, though? All over town. Unbelievable. Third and six from the 24. Oh. Suey pushed back, Odious Lee read it beautifully, 65. The middle guard making the stop, pushed back to the 22-yard line, and Penn State brings its punting unit in quickly. Ralph Jack tomorrow, the freshman, to boot it away on fourth down. High kick. Well, Good one. Cute. Brown has to Woo. back up. Kenny takes it at the 22. Oh. Gets a nice block. But can't capitalize on it. Dropped at the 22-yard line by Matt Bradley. So Nebraska taking over first down. Coming up from Green Bay on Monday night. First time Monday night football has originated from Lambeau Field. The New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers live at 9 Eastern time. First quarter, Al Michaels and Ara Parsegian at Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska, 7 to nothing, Penn State, Nebraska from its own 22-yard line. Nothing doing through the middle. It's going to be tough to run inside on Penn State for anybody, including Nebraska. I'll tell you, that Giacomoro, the punter for Penn State, put that ball up in the air for 56 yards, and that was a terrific kick. What wind there is, he was kicking into. Very light breeze. Second down and eight. 53, 49. 53, 49. Hip. Out to the 26 goes IM. Matt Millen, number 60, made the tackle. And we are isolated on Matt. Matt Millen, 255, number 60 there. One of the great football players. They try to block down on him. He avoids the block, gets penetration, then comes back inside and makes the play. I tell you, those two guys are really something. Clark and Millen. Woo, I'd hate to play against them. Third down and six at the 26-yard line. Hager. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Intercepted at the 25-yard line, and Penn State's going to lead it 13 to nothing. Tom Wise. Of all things 
because Joe Paterno was more worried about his secondary than any other facet of his defense. And that secondary has just put six on the board. Tom Wise with the interception, it's 13 to nothing, Penn State. His timing was just perfect on that play. He stepped in, it looked like the receiver was going to be open. He slipped inside there, juggled it momentarily, and of course took it in for the interception. Some kind of start for Penn State in this first quarter. Junior Miller was the intended receiver. Tom Wise out of Washington, Pennsylvania. Timeout is now called by Penn State. Got a substitution problem here. They're, <laughs> they're short a man. Okay, you see Hager come back. Fakes a little sprint draw in here. Not a very good fake. And he turns and the appears that his receiver is open. He throws right here. And the ball, as you see, is great play there by Wise. He stepped in there. He was kind of camouflaged by the other receiver. Terrific defensive play. And certainly the suspect defensive secondary of Penn State is off to a great start in this game. There he is, Tom Wise. That's a secondary as we take another look that has been rebuilt. You look at another view from it. There it is. Now watch Wise step in here, deflect the ball with his right hand, right out of the receiver's hands, and bring it down and gallop into the end zone. Boy, that's a thrill he'll never forget. One reason Paterno was so worried about that secondary, they lost Pete Harris and Carl McCoy because of grades. Two fine starters last year. Harris led the nation in interceptions with 10. Exactly Herb Menhart right. in to attempt the extra point. He is 8 for 8 thus far this season. And he's now 9 for 9. So the 30-yard run back by Wise. Menhart converting. Three minutes remaining in the first quarter before a stunned crowd in Lincoln right now. It is 14 to nothing. Penn State. <laughs> and there, well, we've got some Penn State posters. Not too many of them here, but making their presence known and felt. They are dwarfed in that sea of red. Well, I'll tell you, this early in the ball game, don't count for the Huskers out of this game. I've seen them come back before. They're a good football team, and of course, they, the execution on the part of Penn State on the first score was terrific. And of course, the interception has really been tough on them, but a long part of the game to be played. Joe Paterno, all week long, he had the crying towel out. Tom Osborne said, well, I know Joe's a very sincere fellow, but don't you believe it for a minute. <laughs> Nobody doubts what Osborne said right now. 14-0 Penn State. Back deep, Kenny Brown, number 22, along with Anthony Steeles, 33, in the direction of Brown goes Franco's kick, takes it at the two, out to the 10, and throws it back to Steeles at the nine. And he stumped at the 15-yard line. He threw a 20-yard pass. You know, if he had stepped to the outside, he had a wall there. It's a gambling-type play. Watch this now. He comes up the field. Then he turns and throws back a lateral, which is legal. Now, if he steps to the outside, he's got a wall out here. He made a move there that created, I think he helped the Penn State defense there. He was gone up that sideline if he stayed outside. Dan Rocco, the man who made the tackle. So Nebraska from the 15-yard line. Jarvis Redwine to the outside has his jersey ripped off as he gets out to the 21-yard line. Tom Wise, who ran it back for the TD, made the tackle. So an equipment change for Redwine, and I am hip comes back into the game at the I-back spot. 8.2 average for the transfer from Oregon State out of Englewood, California. Second down, three. Stopped by Cuban. And a first down at the 26-yard line. One of the things that happens when you have a, an interception for a score like that, it really jolts that quarterback's confidence in putting it up. You can be assured he'll be a little bit cautious the next time he, he throws a football. He stays on the ground to pick up the first down. Now he has first and 10. Does Hager at the 26-yard line. They send Brown in motion. Pitch it back to I.M. Hip. Skitters out to the 27-yard line. 
Bruce Clark and Greg Jones right there. Jones number 99. Late in the first quarter, Penn State on top, 14-0. They drove 82 yards for their first score, Scoville. Making the catch in the end zone after a juggling act, and then Wise running back the interception, 30 yards, 14-0, Penn State. It is second and eight at the 28. Hager on a keeper. Gets two to the 30. Clark again is there, along with Gene Gladys, 79. Let's isolate on Clark, the Lombardi Award winner last year. Number 54, Bruce Clark. He's getting pressure from the inside, and then what we call a J block. The guard comes around, tries to log him in, he keeps his feet, and gets into the play. Third down and five, Nebraska at the Cornhusker, 31. Hager, complete out to the 38 of first down to Smith. Tim Smith from Chula Vista, California, stopped by Rick Donaldson. Well, that'll make Hager feel a little bit better here. Throw that flat pass. Hager comes back. He gets two blockers in front, including hip, and he just has good protection, and he throws on the move to the left. He gets one-on-one -on -one coverage, and, of course, they pick up the first down. Out to the 38. Hager is now four out of six for 29 yards. To the air again. Good protection. Going long. Looking for Smith. He's got a step, but he can't make the catch. Smith got out in front, but couldn't hold on. Tom Wise was back there with him. Well, he laid that ball right in there. It would have been a tough catch. He made a great stretch for it. He does have it in his hands, but it bounces out as he hits the ground. Let's take a look at it again. Taking a little eye back sprint. Then he lays it up there. Smith goes up the sideline. Let's see exactly what happens. He reaches out, has it momentarily, and then loses it. Great effort. Second down and 10 at the 38-yard line. 14-0 Penn State late first quarter. Hager again. Complete out to the 47-yard line to Scott Woodard. John Walsh, 23, out of Akron, Ohio. Made the tackle from the end zone. We saw this play earlier, and one that he overthrew. This time he drills the ball in there. He has it just as open as he did previously, but this time, of course, he has it where the receiver can catch it. And Woodard comes down, just turns in. It's a little look-in pattern with a fake to the fullback up the middle. It's now third and one from the 47-yard line. And they pitch it to Redwine. Turns the corner and gets the first down. And guess who that Whoa, was? Oh, Matt Millen. Can you believe that? Number 60. 260 pounds. And I thought, he, I thought Redwine had the corner. That man is about 260. You talk about being able to fly. He pursued. Didn't look like he had the angle. Redwine is the fastest man they've ever had here. <laughs> that tells you a little something about it's Millen. It. Matt Millen. Woo. He and Clark. This could be the final play of the first quarter. 15 seconds to go at the 49 of Penn State. They give it to Jarvis Redwine. He bounces off one man, but not another. And he is stopped by Gene Gladys, number 79. And that will run out the clock in the first quarter in Lincoln. So at the end of one period of play at Memorial Stadium, it is Penn State leading Nebraska 14 to nothing. Here in Lincoln, we start the second quarter. The first half, of course, of our big NCAA doubleheader coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern time. UCLA 2-1 against the unbeaten Buckeyes of Ohio State. Here it's 14-0 Penn State at the 49-yard line. It is second and 10, Nebraska, as we start the second quarter. Hager to Smith. And he's out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Very close to a first down. John Walsh pushed him out. Giuseppe Harris also covering. Not the same type of pass that was intercepted. It's just an out pattern. You see Hager just sprint out to the right again with good blocking in front. Wide receiver Smith just turns out. The defender is deep, but they may change their coverage, which we call kind of a roll up into a half coverage, where that corner man will come up and take the flight. The safety man will support him in the back, and that's when that ball can be picked off. They brought the change. The 
across the field. It's a measure at the 39-yard line, and they are shy by about six inches. So that'll set up a third down at the 39-yard line. But Nebraska with a sustained drive here. Now both teams are throwing the ball better than they have in the first two ball games. Third down. Inches. blocked play. You can see the daylight open up. Here's the stats in the first quarter. Even though you know the Penn State leads in this ball game 14 to nothing, you see the dominance of Nebraska in the first down area. The yardage passing has been the difference in this game with 67 yards for Penn State, 38 for Nebraska, and the possession is pretty even. With Nebraska having the ball just a little bit more in that first period. Of course, that one turnover headed seven for Penn State. The interception by Wise. It's first down at the 21-yard line. Nebraska trying to claw its way back into it. Penn State leading 14 to nothing. With that third down and short yardage, uh, Penn State elected to come up into a goal line type of defense, and Nebraska blocked it beautifully. It was a great daylight for Red Wine, and he took it. First down, that's Miller setting up tight on the left side. Red wine again, and look at Clark, 54. Uh-oh. Penalty marker is down. Can you grab the mask? Red wine shaken up. Here's an All-American in action. Watch Clark, 54 face mask, though. Mm. Okay, here he comes down to the inside. Yep. Yeah, he must have reached in there with his right arm and grabbed the mask. Yep. It's a tough penalty. It was an inadvertent uh, uh -huh. grab, but uh, they have to be penalized because it's a very dangerous thing. One of the things that the America, the rules committee has done is to try to try to provide rules, rule changes that uh, increase the safety for the players, and I think that's one that has to be enforced. It's worked as far as these two teams are concerned. If you can draw a conclusion after two games, both teams come coming very, very healthy. Penn State, first down. You hear the referee, he's Mike. Vance Carlson, as they experiment with that. And a first down at the 10-yard line. Here it is again. This from the, looks like with his right hand, you can see the head of Redwine move back towards the arm of Clark. So first down. Just outside the 10. Hager's going to put it up. Throws to Miller. Touchdown. <laughs> Junior Miller, the tight end, makes his sixth reception of the season. They didn't waste any time with that one, boy. That was a... They took advantage of it. It was a goal line design pass play, and it was perfectly executed. The sea of red balloons are loosed here at Memorial Stadium as 52 seconds into the second quarter. The Cornhuskers come back to score. Dean Sukup, who won last week's game with a late field goal against Iowa out of Hager's hole for the point after. Good. Once again from the end zone now, the touchdown pass from Hager to Junior Miller. Again, all the college teams are using crossing ends. They fake to the right, they fake to the eye back, and again, Junior Miller crossing from right to left is open, and you've got a touchdown for Nebraska. Opening minute of the second period, Penn State leading by seven. The freshman, Kurt Warner, averaging almost 26 yards per return on the kickoffs. He's back deep, along with Mike Gulman. Kevin Seibel kicking off from the two. It's Warner to the 10, to the oh, 20, almost broke it, got out to the 27-yard line. 
Once again, Junior Miller going in for six for the Cornhuskers. You watch Junior Miller, 89 cross. It's his second touchdown pass of the year. But again, crossing ends, which is very difficult to defense down near the goal line. There he is. Got a great career. Didn't play very well last week. Uh, they kind of got on him a little bit. Didn't block as well as they would like. But uh, he certainly caught that touchdown pass, and he's really a great athlete. That capped an 85-yard drive. Nebraska held it for 15 plays. They had a marker down on the kickoff. Offside was the call against Nebraska on the kickoff. And so they'll boot it again, this time from the 35-yard line. Well, I was impressed with that Kurt Warner. He he made a move there uh, that, you know, he's going to be an exciting runner. He could have cracked through there and had a big gainer on the kickoff. Moves that the average back doesn't make. I have a little over a quarter that we've looked at this guy, but I'll tell you this, we're going to hear a lot from him in Penn State in years to come, and maybe even on this kickoff. Who knows? Out of a tiny town in West Virginia, the town of Wyoming. Well, I guess uh, Osborne and the Nebraska staff uh, went down there in the middle of the winter trying to get him. Uh -huh. And uh, he elected to go to Penn State even after there was a lot of heat put on to have him go to West Virginia. Joe Paterno didn't actually see him play football. Some of his assistants did. Joe saw him play basketball, though, and he said, all right, this kid can play. He's an athlete. <laughs> He's going to get it again. From the five this time. To the 20. 25. And out to the 28-yard line. Just about the same spot where they returned the other kick. Sammy Sims in on the tackle. And Warner will stay in at the tailback spot. Penn State operating. Now he's going to come out, and Booker Moore will replace him. Penn State operating out of the eye sometimes, using the veer split back formation a little bit more, though, this year, Eric. I've been passing more out of this uh, I formation, taking the tailback off, taxing, uh, off tackle. Here it is again with two lead backs. He's outside the contain with a wide open hook man. Tom Donovan at the 40 gets out to the 44 yard line. Tom Donovan, senior from East Northport, New York, averaged 20 yards a catch last year. He's getting excellent protection. He just sprints out behind, behind Booker and Sui, who's a terrific blocker. He can run that ball or pass it here. And you see he puts the ball in Donovan's hands on the curl hook. I'll tell you this, he's impressed me. Here you take a look at Donovan, number 19, great athlete, wide open in the seam, zone coverage on the part of Nebraska. First down at the 43-yard line. Tate gives it to Moore. Got tripped up in his own backfield. And there's no gain on the play. He did have success with that draw play last week against uh, Texas A&M and also Rutgers. Been a pretty good gainer for him, for him, and it should even improve because of their passing efficiency here. Teams have a tendency to drop off, and uh, it was a good call, but well defensed by Nebraska. Tate through the air today, five out of seven for 84 yards. Second down, 10. Low pass and incomplete, intended for Suey, the fullback. Well, he threw the ball at his feet. And you can't catch it down there. I think that's the first fundamental I learned when I was in grade school in basketball. Don't throw the ball at a man's feet. And that it's almost it's impossible. But he's having a great afternoon. Tate now five of eight. Ball at the 43-yard line. Third and 11. Warner is the tailback. They have Gooman wide right, Donovan wide to the left. It's like an automatic. Tate. Almost intercepted. Oop. Almost picked off as Strova was the intended receiver. I'll tell you what happened there, Al. He thought he had one-on-one -on -one coverage on his wide receiver, Donovan. He called an audible at the line. But there was good coverage by Nebraska, and he tries to hit the secondary receiver, and this is almost an interception. That's Derry Nelson, who nearly picked it off as Jack Amaro, the freshman punter, to kick it away. Good kick. Brown backs up oh. from the 10. Blocking does inform. Four-yard run back to the 14-yard line. Ron Walchek made the tackle. 47-yard punt. Number 77, 
So 12.40 remaining in the first half. Penn State leading. There's a man who almost picked it off, Nelson. With 12.40 to go to halftime. Penn State on top, 14-7. to The Cornhuskers have the ball at their own 50 lead. 12.40 to go. Second quarter, it's 14-7 Penn State. The Nittany Lions moving out to a 14-0 lead. Then an 85-yard Nebraska drive. And after a punt, Nebraska has it back where they started the last drive at their own 15-yard line. I am hip is the eye back on first down. Tim Hager, the quarterback, pitching to I am, coming to the short side of the field and out to the 21-yard line. Steve Griffiths making the tackle. Good sustaining of the blocks on the right side. It didn't appear that Hip was going to get any running room. He stayed right in there beside, behind his blockers, and they sustained. And he picked up five yards when it didn't look like anything was going to be there. I am Hip, a moniker All-American, if there ever was one. <laughs> he, and, right. he and Elvis Peacock would be the all-timers. <laughs> Isaiah Moses. Second down and four. Hip again. Slithering to the outside and finding an opening to get the first down. Out to the 26. Again, it is Steve Griffiths making the tackle along with Rick Donaldson. He's carried the ball six times for 19 yards. Well, the mark of a great back is that he doesn't run right into his blockers. And both those occasions, you see the running backs will come out, read their blockers, and he got as much as he could on those two plays. First down at the 26-yard line. Looking for Brown. Oh, what a move by Kenny to the 32. Kenny Brown, the wing back from Cincinnati, Ohio. Rick Donaldson, Tom Wise converge for the tackle from ground level. We'll see it. You think he didn't fake out Tom Wise, the defensive halfback? <laughs> here he comes rolling out. They just bring him underneath. He's wide open here. You see Wise number 49 there will come up to support and take the flat. But watch the move he puts on him. Here's Brown catching the ball. And he Ooh. turns Wise right around. And then Donaldson makes the tackle. To the 35-yard line goes Tim Worth, the second-team fullback. He's spelling Andre Franklin. Nebraska Smell made the stop. They're starting to develop some consistency in their attack, both running and passing. They're kind of scrambling around a little bit in the first quarter, but they've settled down here, and now the passing game as well as the running game is starting to generate uh, some positive yardage and consistency. Dr. Tom Osborne looking on with the Huskers at their own 36-yard line. Third down and a short one. <laughs> Worth again. 45 out to the 48-yard line. That's the second time they've been able to nearly break one all the way on a third and short. Obviously, they've looked at Penn State film. Both times that Penn State has come into their short yardage defense, they have blocked it well. Once to the left side, that time right up the middle, and on both instances, they almost broke it all the way. They're going to have to stay out of that goal line defense because Nebraska is well prepared for it. They have proven that on successive series. It is first down at the 48-yard line. This drive starting at the Nebraska 15. Hager, after the play fake, has time, throws incomplete at the 37-yard line. Yeah, looked like Kuban was in there and put a lot of heat on the passer. The ball was really drilled. He really threw that ball in there. Hager's got a strong arm. Woodard, the intended receiver. The figures on Hager, 67%. 8 for 12, he's off to a great start. That ball could have been caught, although he really had some pop on it. Second down, 10 at the 48. 44, 41! Red water. To the 44 of Penn State. Giuseppe Harris coming up to make the tackle. They're picking them pretty well here. Great option play. If they'd have gone to the right, they were in trouble. The de defense of Penn State was deployed to, to the left side, and quarterback, I think, audibleized that, went to the left, and really had running room. It'll be third down and three. 
just inside the Penn State 45-yard line. Penn State leading 14-7. Hager led his man, looked for Worth, incomplete. Worth was out there alone. Somewhere, someone made a mistake with the Penn State defense. He was wide open on the play. The coverage is not there. Of course, the rush was there and forced a, the pass. Here he is, Hager rolling out at ground 11. Kuban putting the pressure on number 74. Here's the ball, just overthrown, but he had him wide open. That will force Nebraska to kick. Tim Smith setting up at his own 41. Gooman and Suey are deep for Penn State. Wow. He boomed it again. And that one goes into the end zone. Boy, has he got a live leg. He does. Ball going into the end zone. So Penn State will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Tim Smith caught a couple of passes today. Good leg. And Penn State to take over at the 20. We have 9.01 to go. First half, Penn State 14, Nebraska 7. The Cornhusker Band will be watching them at halftime on a beautiful day in Lincoln. Just perfect. Cloudless sky, the temperature near 80 degrees. They were quiet initially as Penn State pulled down to a 14 0 lead. But the Cornhuskers got on the board. Junior Miller catching a touchdown pass from Tim Hager to make it 14 7. Now Nebraska has given up the ball again, and Penn State will start from its own 20 yard line. Dale Tate, the quarterback. The tailback on first down is Warner, the freshman. And he's the ball carrier. 4 2 to the 22. Second down and eight, Penn State. The Lions picked by most to finish in the top ten. An easy win in their opener, beating Rutgers 45-10 in the shocker last week. Bill Paterno indicating last week, he said, we just were a little flat. He wants to move that ball out of this field uh, territory if he can. Oh, and it's split backs at Suey. That doesn't work. Left side of the Husker line. Tim Baker, 41, right there to meet him. Third down and eight. That is a young offensive line for Penn State. And uh, I think they'll mature, and I can feel the momentum shifting in this game. Penn State's having difficulty making any yardage on the ground. Third down and seven at the 23. Tate throwing it up for Donovan, incomplete. Andy Means back covering on the play. And so they hold, and Nebraska will get the ball back. The way Joe is <laughs> speaking with Tate right here, I'm not sure that play was in the book. Probably didn't want him to put it up in the air that way, in the interception ball. Jack Amaro to kick. Ooh, look at this guy, put it up. Very high kick. Brown the fair catch. At the 27-yard line. So, back come the Cornhuskers offensively. Jeff Quinn was their starting quarterback. He went most of the way against Utah State in the opener. And last week had difficulty moving the ball against Iowa. Hager came on to spark the comeback. They were down 21-7 at one point. And Hager has gone all the way today and looked good so far. From the 28, first and 10. Oh. Inside give for the wing back Brown to the 30. Let's see how I got through there. There was a lot of penetration there by both Jones and Clark. Say, so, you know, one thing I've been impressed with is the punting of both teams. They really are putting that ball up in the air, and that is a tremendous asset and weapon. Smith of Nebraska, Jack Amaro, just a freshman for Penn State. That was another concern that Paterno had, kicking. But Jack Amaro has looked good. You bet. Today. Second and eight. Oh, look at here. Good fake. Miller wide open again. The 30. The 20. 
He's in again for a touchdown. 14-13. on the play, Junior Miller, Miller came up the field, but Mickey Urquhart, the defensive left halfback for Penn State, has been moved from the monster position out to the cornerback. He thought this was a run action away from him. He started to pursue to the right. Junior Miller went right straight up the field. You will see Urquhart here trailing now. Number 36, and there is inexperience. Great execution. Now Suka, the extra point attempt is good. And just like that, thanks to Junior Miller and Tim Hager, the Cornhuskers have come back to tie it. It's 14-14. The man who scored it, Junior Miller, the 21-year-old senior tight end, 6'4", 220-pounder out of Midland, Texas. He's caught two balls today, both for touchdowns. It's 14-14 with seven minutes to go in the half. Seibel kicking off for Nebraska, booms it. Out of the end zone. By Gooman, out to the 20. Let's see the touchdown again, 70 yards. You see the run action fake to the left. Urquhart thinks it's a run and starts moving to his right. A beautiful fake and deception. Hager lofts the ball up to Junior Miller, who has run by Urquhart. And again, you've got to say Urquhart, who played the monster position a week ago and has been moved to the corner, is likely and prone to that kind of mistake. Great play by the Nebraska team. There he is. They got his attention last week, I'll tell you. <laughs> At the 20-yard line, the Nittany Lions on first and 10. Tate, the pitch. Oh. He loses the ball. It's picked up at the 14-yard line. Nebraska has it. So right now it is all Big Red. Gary Nelson, who nearly had an interception before, picks up this one. Well, that's a tough place to be making a mistake. First down at the 15-yard line. So Nebraska knocking on the door again. The pitch. To Brown, who came around from the wingback slot. That didn't fool the Lions. Steve Griffiths is there to make the tackle. He stayed in bounds. Wingback option, well played by Penn State. I'll tell you one thing that the Nebraska team does have a very diversified attack. Got good deceptive moves. They can run the power at you, and they've got a lot of finesse offense. We may see one here. Let's look for something special, possibly. Second down and 11. <laughs> Our own squad, huh? Hey. <laughs> Number one. Second and 11 from the 16-yard line. The play fake again. Hager has it knocked down by Clark. The big hands of Bruce. Number 54. Junior Miller was out here in the right flat. Boy, did he want that ball. Hey. He was open. Bruce Clark, our ABC Chevy 1978 defensive Player of the Year last year. Hometown boy from State College, PA. 6'2", 265. Third down, 11. Nebraska at the Penn State 16. Reverse. Brown again on the wing back. Reverse. Inside the 10. There goes Kenny at the 6. did not catch a pass and did not carry the ball once in the first two games, but he's been all over the field today, and Nebraska has the lead. Well, he had a great couple of great pieces uh, in the newspaper this week. He said he wanted the team to win. That was the most important thing, but he was looking forward to his first opportunity to catch a ball. Well, not only has he done that this afternoon, but he has also just put the leading score on the board for the Huskies, or Huskers. Sukup's kick is good. So Penn State has watched the 14 nothing lead evaporate in a big hurry. Six minutes and two seconds remaining 
in the first half. You can see here, Brown is split clear out wide. He takes the ball to the fullback. Then Hager deals the ball off. Beautiful. The timing has to be just right. He ducks it to the inside, and no one can get close there, except it looks like uh, Steve Griff did have a shot, but he couldn't have kept him out of the end zone. Eddie Brown, right. the wing back out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Back deep, Mike Gooman, number 24, along with the freshman Kurt Warner. There's Seibel, ready to kick off for the Cornhuskers. He's been booting them long so far today. Gets this one down to the four-yard line. Gooman. No help. And dropped at the 13. So we have 5.57 remaining in the first half. You can see Penn State moved up on top with two quick touchdowns in the first quarter, but back came Nebraska. Junior Miller catching two touchdown passes, and then after the fumble, Kenny Brown able to take it in, and Nebraska leads by seven. First down, Penn State from the 13. Tate not afraid to put it up. Well over Donovan's head, he was covered. Andy Means back there with him. It'll be second down, 10. This program is being brought to you as an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. KETV Channel 7, Omaha. In Lincoln, Nebraska, Al Michaels with Ara Parsegian. 21-14, Nebraska. Second and 10, Penn State at their own 13-yard line. 5.52 till halftime. Warner takes it out to the 18. The freshman stopped there by Kim Baker. Al, you could sense the, uh, the momentum shifting in this second period. And I think uh, possibly that Joe Paterno would want this half to end as rapidly as he can to kind of regroup in the locker room. Let's see if he takes any chances here to get a first down. He needs one. Third down and four from the 18. I'm going to put it up. Tate in trouble, and Nebraska has stopped them again. Odious lead, number 65. Nelly sprinting out again to the right. All I needed was about five yards on the play. He comes out, he's got lead blockers in front, but he gets pressure from the rear. Right there, Odious Lee catches up with him as he slows down, and of course, they got to punt it away. Ralph Giacomaro. Another dandy. A beauty. Fair catch. Brown juggles and it holds on. Woo. At the 42. So Nebraska in decent shape near midfield as they begin this drive. This is the first half of a great NCAA doubleheader. We'll see the Bruins of UCLA, Rick Fayshore and company against Ohio State. Earl Bruce has his team unbeaten. Took care of Washington State last week. UCLA losing to Houston in its opener but back the next week to beat Purdue. And then last week they took care of the Badgers of Wisconsin. That's next at 4 Eastern time on ABC. Oh, I am hip. First down to the Penn State 45. He got 13. Well, they got outside the corner that time. There was nobody there. The contain was blocked to the inside. Uh, hip had the whole corner. Hip, Jarvis Redwine, great pair of eye backs for Tom Osborne. First down at the 45 yard line. Miller sets up on the right side, tight. Franklin through the middle. The 25, the 20, down to the 11 yard line. Andre Franklin, the fullback, Nicky Urquhart made the tackle. Prep play up the middle that Franklin ran beautifully. You watch here from a ground level. Hager turns, gives the ball. They're losing here momentarily, but it's well blocked to the inside. He cuts back clear to the right. Gets outside the defensive halfback. And 
comes down the sideline before he's finally pushed out of bounds by Mickey Earhart, Earhart. And it's first and ten. Franklin stays in at fullback. The tailback is Jarvis Redwine. First down from the 11. The pitch back to Redwine. Gets a block from Franklin. And works his way to the five-yard line. Redwine going outside after Franklin had burned them inside. Last week, Penn State gave up a lot of territory on the ground, mainly Curtis Dickey doing the damage for Texas A&M, a speedster. Now they come back this week, and they've got to look at Pitt and Redwine and get burned by Franklin through the middle. Most Second been, down four. In some kind of quarter for Nebraska. Franklin, touchdown Nebraska. Kelly Saulfeld, the center, moving to the side to open the hole. And so the Cornhuskers have come back from a 14 to nothing deficit to lead 27-14. And they've done it every way. They've run inside, outside, passed the ball. They're really moving the ball. Suka. He's four for four today. And he's 12 for 12 for the season. From the end zone now, Franklin taking it in. Just watch a trap right across the front there. The left guard pulls. Andre Franklin has Joe too much leverage here. Shakes the Griffin away. And into the end zone for the fourth touchdown. And again, you look at it. They have been able to trap inside. They've gotten leverage at the corner. Here's Franklin again. Shakes the linebacker. He's about 220. He's not a little guy. All right. Nebraska 28 and Penn State 14. 324 remaining in the second quarter. Andre Franklin. There's Warner and Gooman switching spots this time with Seibel to kick off. Penn State wants to get it to Warner. They do, and he'll come out from three yards deep. He hesitated. Now he's to the 15. Now he's down the sideline to the 40 to the 42 yard line. He came out and he thought better of it. Then he said, oh, <laughs> I got to keep going. He got out to about the two yard line and thought, now wait a minute, is this right? <laughs> he's deep in the end zone here when he feels it. Let's take a look at it. He's about three yards in. He comes out. He's about two yards out. Then he turns it up the sideline. I'll tell you, he's an exciting runner. It's interesting how often you see long returns broken on plays like that. Should I or shouldn't I? He takes it out to the 42. Okay, tight end open here. He goes to Warner, and he's buried at the 46-yard line. Gains four, maybe five. Andy Means made the tackle, stayed in bounds, clock runs. Under three minutes to go in the half. It's 28-14, Nebraska. Rolling left that time, Tate did not see Brad Scoble, who was wide open. He was a tight end on the left side. Got into the seam, and he was about 10, 12 yards deep, and he elected to throw the ball into the flat. He'd had bigger yardage if he'd gone to the tight end. Second down, five from the 47. Tate on a roll. He'll keep. In the Nebraska territory. He's to the 48-yard line. Brett Williams, who leads the team in tackles, made that one. And you can see the dominance of Nebraska. Well, it's really unusual. You see Nebraska with a, over 300 yards. This half isn't over yet against a team like Penn State. You know, that's just uh, it's mind-boggling. Great execution on their part. Well, they've really come back. A worried man is Paterno right now. Third in the yard. Suey to the 45. It was first down. It's now second down and seven. Kim Baker making the tackle. Second down and seven at the 45-yard line. Well, they got decent field position. I would think they'd go to the air here and try to get something. Maybe a screen or a special home run play. They've got uh, minute 45. 
on the clock. Plenty of time and good field position. They have two timeouts left. They had to use one to set up for an extra point after Wise's interception return for a touchdown. Second down and seven at the 45-yard line. Tate under pressure. Going back to Warner. That didn't set up well. No, they were waiting for it. They were looking for it, too. Good uh, defensive work by Nebraska. They were sitting there looking for that. So it's third down and seven. 128 to go in the first half. Underway, Lehigh leading Penn in the second quarter. Seven to nothing. Dartmouth with a field goal in the first. Out in front of New Hampshire. Lafayette, two touchdown lead over Columbia. Third and seven. Tate, down he goes at midfield. Brent Williams from Los Angeles. 6-1, a junior. Brought him down. Well, that's been the difference here. They've been putting pressure on Tate, and has, the coverage has been fairly decent, but they've been putting a lot of heat on him, and he's not been able to get the ball away. Jack Amaro to kick. Angles it. Brown calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 13-yard line. All right, here we are on this last third down situation. Tate rolls out to the left. Looks like there's some openings here. But then Williams comes in here out of nowhere. And as Tate tries to escape from him, he doesn't have any balance and he's knocked down and they're forced to punt. Nebraska at the 14 yard line with 54 seconds remaining in the first half. They lead 28 to 14. I don't think they'll get fancy here. They'll just run that clock out. We've got a good quarter here. They don't want to turn that ball open, over down deep in their own territory. They slot red wine this time. And give it to the remaining back, Worth, to the 16. So as you suggested, Tom Osborne will be content to go into the locker room with a two-touchdown advantage. Yeah, the worst thing that could happen here is to turn that ball over to your opponent, have them score real quick, mm -hmm. and it's 28-21 instead of the two-touchdown lead, and psychologically it has more impact than you would ever expect. The Nebraska band. We will see them at halftime in an interesting Fireman's Fund flashback. Coming up, so stay with us as Redwine goes to the outside. And Redwine got tackled inbounds, so the clock continues to run. And the seconds will tick off. And the crowd responding as the Cornhuskers start to leave the field at halftime. Nebraska overcoming a two-touchdown deficit, leading Penn State at the half, 28-14. Back for the start of the second half, Al Michaels and Ara Parsegian. In Lincoln, Nebraska, as you look at a man who has some responsibility right now, Dale Tate, number 17, got Penn State off and flying through a touchdown pass to Brad Scoville early to make it 7-0. Tom Wise returned an interception to make it 14-0, but now they're going to have to scramble from behind. It's 28-14. Well, Nebraska had a tremendous second quarter, and of course you can expect Tate to put the ball up in the second half. They're behind by two scores, but... One of the things that was impressive to me, Al, was the versatility of that Nebraska offense. They scored every possible way that you can, on the ground, up the middle, reverses and passes. They've got a good offense. Anthony Steeles and Kenny Brown. There's Steeles, 33. Brian Franco, the junior, to kick off for Penn State. The second half is underway with the Cornhuskers receiving... And coming out of the end zone is Brown. 15 to 20 to the outside and bumped out at the 32-yard line. So Nebraska starts from there against a defensive line featuring Larry Kubin at left end. Bruce Clark, the quick tackle Lombardi Award winner. Greg Jones, the middleman, number 99. And he's flanked on the other side by another possible All-American in Matt Millen. Gene Gladys, the right end, 79. First down, Nebraska. From their own 32-yard line, Hager has gone all the way at quarterback. Out to the 37 for a gain of five. 
Lance Mell leads the team in tackles, the inside linebacker, along with Steve Griffiths, number 52, and what they call the hero, Rick Donaldson, the other backer, 92. Mickey Urquhart got burned on a play, the defensive back, along with Franco's brother. You can see that resemblance right there, Giuseppe Harris, and Tom Wise ran one back for six in the first half. Second down, five. Oh. Hager losing the ball. Hip has to scramble to find it along with Hager back at the 25. And who's got it? Penn State. You know who caused it, I'll tell you that. Matt Millen caused the fumble. He got all kinds of penetration. And if ever they needed a break, it was right now. Let's see if we can see how he does it. They're trying an option, a little counter option. Hager turns and spins back. There it is right there, Matt Mellon, 60. Hitting Hager before he can deal the ball off. Hip cannot scramble and get the ball. It comes free there, and obviously a Penn State man has recovered it. I can't see who it was. Lance Mell, the linebacker. So Nebraska plagued by fumble problems last week in particular. And now coughing it up here early in the third quarter. So the Nittany Lions try to cash in from the 25-yard line on first down. Tate gives it to Warner, and he gets belted immediately. Loss of one. Brent Williams made the tackle. Up front for the Big Red. Cole. Horn is a good one, the left tackle. We highlighted Winemaster in our pregame show. The middle guard, Bill Barnett, cements the right side. Alongside Derry Nelson, who had a big first half. Second down, 12 at the 27. Tate, down he goes at the 33-yard line. Barnett comes charging through. 97. Tim Baker is the strong side linebacker. Brent Williams leads the team in tackles, number 66. The quarterback on the left side is Rick Lindquist. Mark Leroy was the big eight defensive player of the week last week. Russell Gary was hurt last week, didn't practice till Thursday. Andy Means, the quarterback on the right side. Third down, 18 from the 33. Tate, a lot of time to set up, finds Donovan at the 18-yard line, but it's not a first down. Good catch in there under pressure. Good throw also, if he'd had the presence of mind on the previous play, I'm talking about Darryl Tate, I mean Dale Tate, to uh, get rid of that ball before he got that negative yardage, they'd have had the first down. He gets a little better protection here, steps to the right where he has a little seam, and he delivers the ball between two defenders. It's a good catch by Donovan. He had to come back to get it. On fourth and three, they're going to opt for the field goal unit. Herb Minhoim will set it up at the 25-yard line, so a 35-yard kick. It's long enough and good. So Menhart boots it through with 12 pain to go in the third quarter. It's now Nebraska 28 and Penn State 17. Kenny Brown, who scored Nebraska's third touchdown, is back deep along with Steeles. After the field goal by Menhart, Franco kicking off. It's 28 to 17. Huskers, it's Steeles from the end zone, belted down at the 11 yard line. So in the ever-shifting game of momentum, it might belong to Penn State right now. As you look at Nebraska up front, Junior Miller, the tight end, scoring two touchdowns in the first half. Well, field position here. Uh, in the early going, the Nebraska fumbled the ball, which has been a problem for them. A week ago, they lost five out of six. It was untimely fumble for them, but uh, Penn State could only capitalize to the tune of a field goal rather than a touchdown. Now they got them backed up deep in their own territory. From the 12 on first down. I am hip. Gain of four. Greg Jones makes the tackle. A Prudential College scoreboard, of course, follows this one. As we bring you up to date, Auburn and Tennessee are tied in the first. Florida, Mississippi State getting underway. And Kentucky has moved out to a 14 to nothing lead over unbeaten Maryland. That's a surprise. And South Carolina, a 35 nothing winner over Duke last week, leading Georgia. 
Mr. Dooley having some problems there. Second down and four. Hip. It's Rip. Rick Donaldson. 92. Making the stop. North Carolina, Carolina State beating Wake Forest 7 0 in the third quarter. Virginia over Duke 17 3 in the second. Florida State 14 over Virginia Tech 7 third quarter. Well, that was second quarter, I guess. Georgia Tech is behind William and Murray now 7 3. And the Mountaineers lead Richmond by 11. Third down and four. Deep drop. Hager tries to set up the screen, and Redwine makes the catch and is buried immediately. Dangerous pass. Gene Gladys there to make sure he didn't get the first down. They're going to have to punt again. Well, they had a screen set up there, but it was good defensive play by the Penn State defensive unit. Now they should get the ball in fairly decent field position again. This is a good start for Penn State in the second half. I know how Tom Osborne feels. He would have liked to punch that thing out of there and not give those three points, but they, uh, they're in a dogfight here. Tim Smith to kick it away. Gooman and Suey back deep. Fair catch called for by Gooman in the Nebraska territory at the 47-yard line. So Penn State is right back in business. Coming up next from the Coliseum in Los Angeles, Earl Bruce. He has his Buckeyes 3-0 right now against the UCLA Bruins. That is going to be a beauty. That's going to be a great football game. Skills on both sides. Good linemen on both sides. Until that Schleister can throw the ball, and UCLA is having a good year out of Bayshore. Bruins and Buckeyes following our Prudential College scoreboard. First down, Penn State at the Nebraska 47. Warner, the freshman, to the 46-yard line goes Kurt Lawrence Cole making the tackle. Penn State has not been able to establish the run since the first period. Nebraska's defense has swarmed them under, and the only way they've been able to move that football is through the air. Up front, the rebuilt offensive line of the Nittany Lions. Shuey and Warner, the running backs. Gulman and Donovan, the flankers, they're both to the right this time. Second and eight. Tate going over the middle, overshoots Gulman. Incomplete. He was well covered on the play. Yeah. He was, uh, he really overthrew him that time. I don't know whether he did it deliberately or not. Gulman had a lot of people around him. He just drives down the middle, middle. They're trying to split the double zone. And you see right there, he's covered by Mark Leroy. They're monster man and the ball is way overthrown third down and eight to illustrate Penn State's problems on the ground they've rushed 21 times for 22 yards Tate has to scramble he's got some room and wrestles back at the 41 yard line they needed to move it to the 38 so it'll be fourth and three Brent Williams made the tackle and Penn State will punt it Imagine that Joe will try to get his punter to dump that ball down inside that 10 if he can. Put him under pressure. Ralph Jack Amaro, the freshman punter. I'm sure we'll try to angle it from midfield. The rush is on. They nearly blocked it. High kick. They're going to let it bounce, and Penn State will swarm around it and down it at the four. Hey. Jack Amaro, the punter here, this freshman punter, he does a great job here in getting the ball down deep in the Nebraska territory. Here comes the rusher. You can see that he deliberately attempts to avoid hitting him there. 8.48 to go in the third. Eight minutes and 48 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Nebraska out in front of Penn State, 28 to 17. A good beginning for Penn State here in the second half as they have once again pinned Nebraska deep inside its own territory. The Huskers will operate now from the three. Jarvis Redwine is the eye back. Hager giving the Redwine through the middle to try to give him some breathing room. He gets to the seven. That's Lance Mel right there. Take another look at it to be conservative down in here. 
Hager just gives the ball to Redwine, and he muscles up to the inside. They get some penetration or get some movement in there, and he does move it, gets it out to about the seven, I guess, so that the backs now will at least line up on the field of play instead of the end zone. Franklin, the fullback. Redwine, the eye back. Second down and six. Franklin goes through the same spot and works it out for a yard and a half, maybe two. Griffiths, among others, in on the tackle. So third down and a little more than four. Alabama, number two, out in front of Vanderbilt, seven to nothing. Hey, they're going to be tough to contend with in the national picture. Big game. Fourth-ranked Texas, a field goal in the first quarter to lead the Tigers, 3-0. Third and four. Get down here. Hager faking. Throwing long for Smith. He's got it on the 49 line. And he's brought down from behind at the 44 of Penn State. John Walsh got burned. And great execution there. All Smith does is run an out and up on the pattern. You cannot see from this vantage point. Hager comes back, rolls out behind, behind two blockers. Smith goes out. He fakes the ball to him. The defender comes up. He bites the bait. And, of course, here you see Smith wide open beyond his defender. And the fake by Hager set that thing up. It was perfect. What a big play. First down from the 44. Red one. To the 23. So Nebraska has come out of a hole in a hurry. Boy, they're explosive. Really explosive. They come out of their own shadow of their goal line, and in two plays, they're down to the 22, 23 yard line of Penn State. Jarvis Redwine, the transfer from Southern California, went to high school in Inglewood, then went to Oregon State University. Backing up IM Hip. What a pair of eye backs. First down at the 23. It's Hip's turn. Nothing doing, though. Got a yard. Second and nine. Lance Mill, 56. In on the tackle. Well, I know how Joe Paterno feels on that. You've got your opponent pinned down in your own territory, their own territory. You're going to force a punt and get the ball inside the 50. And next thing you know, you look up and your opponent is down to your 22. That'll make you gray in a hurry. Second and nine. Red wine. He likes that left side. To the 14. Walsh in on the tackle. You know, uh, Al, I think one of the things that's interesting in this football game is Hager, Tim Hager, number 10, the quarterback, was the number five quarterback on this team in spring practice and has worked his way up from number five up to number two and in the third game of this season has worked his way to a starting position and certainly he's demonstrated this afternoon that he's deserving of that. Good ball handling. Third down and two. And they get the first going through the middle. Andre Franklin to the 11. They're underway in Pittsburgh and Montreal. The Pirates lead Chicago 3-0 in the second inning. Montreal leads Philadelphia 2-0 in the second. If Pittsburgh wins and Montreal loses, it would be all over. If Pittsburgh wins and Montreal wins, Montreal would be barely alive, and we would have baseball for you tomorrow. Looks like a field goal and a safety there. First and 10 at the 11-yard line. Red wine gets to the 10. One of the schools that recruited Red Wine was New Mexico. Gene Huey, who's a receivers coach here in Nebraska now, is at New Mexico. Red Wine opted to go to Oregon State, and when he became unhappy there, he was watching television, watching Nebraska play, and he saw Huey on the Nebraska staff. And he calls Gene and he says, hey, you got room for me in Lincoln? And Huey said, yeah, I think we can find some room for you, pal. How lucky can you get, huh? Yep. No. Look at this, the dominance of the rushing statistics. Woo. 
Second down and nine. Hager has it knocked away, and it's caught back at the 12-yard line and taken to the 10. The man who batted it up was Kubin. Well, he's calling it, it was touched, but it's legally touched. There's no penalty. There you are. He comes rolling out. There's Kubin, number 74, coming in. And that's the, the Donaldson there. Deflects the ball. The corner man was rushing. You can't see who was that grabbed that ball. That was 57. It's off center. here. It was a legally touched ball. Third down and nine. And it's worth the backup fullback who takes it to the nine. We'll try to grab the field goal back here. So the drive logging down. And he'll try to put three up on the board. It's 28 to 17 Cornhuskers. With Sukup to kick from the 16 yard line, a 26 yard attempt. Hager holding. And the kick is no good. Wow. So they can't cash in after moving from deep in their own territory. It is still Nebraska 28, Penn State 17. The Big Ten and the Pac-10. A couple of powers from each conference, Ohio State and UCLA. Both teams ranked in the top 20. Coming up as the second half of our doubleheader. A new quarterback for Penn State as they go with Rakowski now from the 20-yard line on first down. He throws to Suey complete, and Suey takes it out to the 37 with good individual effort. Suka missed the last field goal. He isolated on Osborne. He's watching it sail wide to the right. <laughs> He's, he's telling the official it was good. I know the feeling. Gain of 17. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Terry Rakowski, his first action of the day. Joe Paterno changing quarterbacks. Ball carried by Suey. Suey to the 41. Derry Nelson makes the tackle. We have two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. 28 to 17. Nebraska, and look at that advantage in total offense. Well, that's incredible. Rakowski's only been in there. He's only thrown the ball up uh, prior to this game three times for two completions, and he only run it once. Second and six. Well, oh, the order should have had it. Yeah, it was right in his hands. Although there was a defender there that uh, waved his hand, it might have distracted him. So it'll be third down. He's looking for a signal on the sideline. Rakowski is a sophomore from Frackville, Pennsylvania. And Nebraska is going to take a timeout here. We can update you. North Carolina leading Army. Army coming off that upset over Stanford last week. 7-3 Tar Heels. Syracuse out in front of the Cougars of Washington State. 17-0 early. Rutgers and Princeton are tied at the half. Yale leading Connecticut, 17 to three in the third period. Brown out ahead of Rhode Island by two scores at halftime. Massachusetts over Harvard at halftime, 10 to nothing. Lehigh leading Pennsylvania, 10 to seven. Dartmouth over New Hampshire, second. And Lafayette leading Columbia, 14 to seven. After the Husker timeout, it is third down and six. Penn State at the Nittany Lion 41-yard line. 2.07 remaining third quarter. Nebraska leading 28 to 17. The Cornhuskers scoring all their points in the second quarter. So Terry Rakowski, the sophomore quarterback, on third down and six. Warner. We've got a flag down. Nebraska may have been offside. It may be academic, though, because Warner gets it out to the 48-yard line. 
for a first down. I'll tell you who jumped offside. Kerry Winemaster jumped offside. Looked like uh, Rakowski was at the line a long time. He audibilized, or apparently, and Winemaster just jumped. So Warner picks up the first. Nebraska offside, decline. First down. Decline because Warner picked up more than the penalty would have netted them. I like that mic on the ref. Oh, that's helpful. They're experimenting with that here. And the time clocks. Time clocks counting down in the end zones. First down from the 49-yard line. Suey to the 47 yard line big eight this year experimenting with the clocks in the end zone like pro football it's, it's not working right now that's the only problem <laughs> normally it counts down from 25 well, that's a great asset to the offensive team when you're going into the end zone you know exactly how much time you have and you can control that clock clock Second down and five. Rakowski. Got a yard to the 45 with a minute to play in the third quarter. Penn State came out of the shoot flying today. Led 14-0, but then the second quarter was totally dominated by the Cornhuskers. They went out in front 28-14 to by the half. Here in the third quarter, the Nittany Lions with a field goal. Nebraska has missed a field goal attempt. It's the Huskers by 11 with 37 seconds to play in the period. Third down, three. A lot of movement and flags all over the joint. And Rakowski scrambling and gets to the 36-yard line. And there go more flags. I think every official has thrown a flag. You know, you might have a dead ball foul here in the new rule. If you had motion in the backfield, although Warner is legally allowed to go in motion. But let's see. I think the referee who stands behind the offensive team called motion on Warner. And I think we have a dead ball foul here, which will, which will necessitate the marching of penalties off both ways. It's a great time to have the mic on the ref, because I'm telling you, with the new rules this year, we were thinking about hiring F. Lee Bailey as the third man in the booth. <laughs> Well, we've only had 66 new rules in the last two years, but they are all made in the interest of safety. All right, motion against Penn State. Personal foul, Nebraska. All right, here it is. Now, see, Curtis, here's what, no, it was a fullback. Suey did move, and, of course, this is legal motion by Warner, but Suey moved and was not set for a second. That is correct call. Warner was legally allowed to be in motion. And, of course, you see the scramble here by Rakowski and picks up a first down. Let's see if we can see the personal foul right there. Coming in late, the last player coming in here, right there. David Clark, 63. All right, again, the signals. Here he is. Illegal motion, Penn State. <laughs> After all that. <laughs> now, now well, here it is. Here it is. Okay, now see what they will what they have right. done is that they have marched five yards off and then marched fifteen yards off. Uh, dead, dead ball fouls this year. Now you had a live ball foul and a dead ball foul. So both of them here it, here it is. So it was a net ten yard gain. Right. This is a new rule in college football. We haven't seen it very often so far, but live ball fouls will offset one another, but a live ball foul and a dead ball foul is something entirely different. The bottom line is first down 10, Penn State at the Nebraska 35-yard line with 19 seconds to go, third quarter, 28-17, Nebraska. Rakowski on his first drive of the day, taking over for Tate. Rakowski keeping. Getting about four to the 31-yard line. Tom Baring makes the tackle, and time has run out in the third quarter. So we move on to the fourth period before a full house in Lincoln. It's Nebraska 28, Penn State 17. 
in Lincoln, Nebraska. Al Michaels with Ara Parsegian. We go to the fourth quarter. The first quarter was dominated by Penn State. The second quarter was dominated by Nebraska. The third quarter, just about a stalemate. Alabama has a two-touchdown lead over Vanderbilt in the first quarter. Well, that's not unexpected. So here it's Nebraska by 11. Penn State second down and six at the Nebraska 31-yard line as we begin the fourth quarter. Warner has it. Never really got his footing as he came out of the backfield. Gets a yard. In the big one between the Horns and the Tigers. It's 8 to nothing Texas in the first quarter. Two field goals and a safety have accounted for the eight points. Both good teams. This is a big play for Penn State. Third down and five. And oh. the Irish out on top of Michigan State. Third and five. Well, oh, they're blitzing him. Coming after him. Rakowski. No, get two. It'll be fourth down. See what Joe elects to do. Gonna go for it here. Fourth down and three. Joe Paterno. He has sent Ron LaPointe, the tight end, in with a play. Well, the odds that he are that he should throw the ball because their running game has been stuffed pretty well. So he'll probably want a spin out pass here. Let's take a look. Fourth and three. Whoa! Bad time for that to happen. Terrible. Well, they got fouled up on their cadence and signals. Quarterback wanted to run away. It could have been the center did not snap the ball. Most of the guys were moving, including the quarterback. So Rakowski, who has come on to try to lead the Nittany Lions, from behind. Illegal procedure, Penn State. You see everybody's moving Fourth the center. Down. You see the snap is not made. Could have been the center's fault. You never know, but it will happen uh, when you do change quarterbacks, as you well know. Voice inflection can vary. Now you know they have to throw. It's fourth down and eight from the 33-yard line. A drive that started at the Penn State 20. Rokowski. Screen. Little screen out to Warner. He's going to have to do it himself and can't. No blocking set up. Brent Williams came in to make the tackle. Nebraska gets the ball back. Nebraska played that perfectly defensively. They overloaded the left side with coverage people as well as rush people. And Penn State played right into their hands by screening to the side where they had the most folks. The Cornhuskers from their own 31-yard line. That's an ominous figure as far as Penn State is concerned. Well, that uh, tells you that they're in good condition, a good defensive team. But this quarter isn't over yet. I'll say one thing. They've played super defensively, particularly in the line. The uh, Nittley Lions have really had difficulty running the ball against them. First down, Nebraska from the 31. Jarvis Redwine spun down back of the 29-yard line, lost a couple. Rick Donaldson took care of him. Coming up Monday night, Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Bart Starr in the pack trying to stop the New England Patriots on ABC's Monday Night Football at 9 Eastern time. See that game last week with Cleveland, Dallas? Yeah, what a ball game. You're talking about a team and a city being up, huh? Wow. Woo. Second down, 12 from the 29-yard line. Hager going deep, looking for Smith. Incomplete. Got Walsh. Run. Walsh with him that time, step for step, though. Yeah, it was right with him there. They're going for the bomb there. Well, they've had good success with a, with a long pass. They've had two big plays in this game. The one to, to Junior Miller for a touchdown up the right sideline here. And the one that got them out of jail when they were back in their own territory. Third down and 12. Tom Osborne in his seventh year. Nice man. Good coach. Great human being. On 
Third and 12. Complete out to the 45-yard line for a first down. <laughs> Steve Griffiths making the stop on Kenny Brown. You know, the guy that I'm really impressed with is this Hager. He comes back here, sets in there, gets good protection. Watch him zap it in there, right? Over the linebacker, Mel's hands. And here we go on Brown, comes down just to turn uh, curl hook, but Mel is right in front of him. And then Griffin knocks him down. Hager is now 13 of 20. He's passed for 199 yards from the 46-yard line. I am hip into Penn State territory to the 47-yard line. I am reels off seven. It'll be second down and three. Griffiths and Giuseppe Harris the tackle. So hip will go out. Red line will come in. Kenny Brown caught that pass. Brown, who had not caught a pass in two games, has caught three today for 37 yards. Brown setting up in the slot to the left. Second and three. Franklin, the pull to the 38-yard line. Millen with help from Harris. Made the tackle. Tell you the thing I really am impressed with Nebraska. They'd be third and 12 or third and eight. Boom, they explode out of there, and the next thing you know, they're running and passing the ball, and they move it as well as any team that I have seen. Big chunks. First down at the 38-yard line. This time it's red wine. Out of bounds at the 32. Giuseppe Harris in on the play again. Franco's brother getting a lot of calls today. Yeah, he sure is. You know, uh, looking at the offensive line in Nebraska, and they're really doing a super job in protecting as well as blocking. There's only one junior in that group. The rest of them are seniors, pretty well experienced, and that is a great advantage, and certainly their performance out here is indicative of the experience that they've had. Second down and four at the 32-yard line. Hager off the fake again, looking for Junior Miller. Incomplete. Yeah, good call. Going for the home run. Junior Miller was open momentarily, and then the ball was open, thro overthrown by Hager. He just comes off the line. They fake into the middle. And here he is, wide open. He turns over his right shoulder. But this is one of the poor throws that Hager throws. You can see it's way over his head. If he would have let him slightly to the right, they've got another score. Third down and four from the 32. This is where Nebraska's been excelling on third down plays. It's Franklin this time, and he is shy, I think, of a first down. Let's see where they give him progress. It's inside the 30. About a yard. Rick Donaldson in on the stop. Franklin's carried the ball nine times for 64 yards today. Hip has gained 50 on the ground. Red wine 91 is shy of the first by one. Fourth and one. They're going to go for it. They bring Steeles in. He's a wing back. Red wine the eye back. Franklin the fullback as Miller sets up tight right. On fourth down, Jarvis Redwine going to the outside. He's got it. Boy, he's got that floating speed. First down, Nebraska at the 27-yard line. Ten minutes and 23 seconds remaining. 28 to 17, Nebraska. First down at the Lion 27. Worth. A lot of backs for Tom Osborne to utilize. Worth oh. and Franklin and, of course, the eye backs. He's got red wine and hip and another fine one we haven't seen today. Craig Johnson. Johnson, yeah, number 30. I think maybe uh, Osborne will try to muscle this one in, see if he can't put it away. Look at this, 240 yards to 52, and, and that's where games are won on the ground and in the trenches. Second down and six. Red line. 
to the 14. Giuseppe Harris. He made the tackle, but it's another first down from the end zone. We'll see it again. Well, here we go. Hager gives the ball to Redwine with a little uh, step to the right, and he, you can see he's getting great daylight, and he runs through the first tackler. The second guy generally gets him, but that first guy has a tough time. He's had 103 yards and 17 rushes. Coming into this ball game, he was averaging 8.2. And he's second team. <laughs> <laughs> first down at the 14. Inside give on the wing back reverse. It's Kenny Brown down to the seven. Well, that's a tough attack to defense. Wind up running a power stuff. Where we take a look at Kenny Brown right here, number 22, coming back on the wing back reverse. A little misdirection play against the flow. He gets a hole here. He comes back to the inside, shakes a tackler, and bleeds some yardage out of it. Second down, a long three. It's a little bit of glory on a day that's belonged to Hip and Red Wine and Franklin. It's Worth who goes over to make it the Corn Huskers 34 and Penn State 17. The same trap that they used uh, when uh, Franklin scored. They've really been blocking them down around the goal line, as I said, that they've really been able to uh, penetrate the goal line defense that uh, Penn State has set up. Sookup's point after. Good. 8.31 to go in Lincoln, Nebraska 35 and Penn State 17. Tim Worth getting a new jersey. Maybe they're sending the other one to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Scored <laughs> to make it 35 to 17. Cornhuskers with eight and a half to play. He's a senior and he's just going to be thrilled with that score. Cybo kicking off. Warner waiting from the goal line. Comes Kurt to the 10. They got a seam here. Look. Closes in a hurry. Out to the 21 yard line. Here's the touchdown again. Worth moving through the middle. See the half cross pulls left and traps on the ground level. The center block back. Southfield blocked to his left. A trapper comes. Watch the left guard pull, crossed and trap. And of course, Worth just steps into the end zone. Look how thrilled he is. <laughs> Woo. So Penn State at its own 22 yard line. First and 10. Rakowski, the sophomore quarterback. Paid the price for picking up five. Yeah, they, uh, they have forced the quarterbacks to run, and the quarterbacks do run while they just swarm right to him, and it looks like he's going to pick up big yardage, but. He manages three or four at the most. Still, it's positive yardage. This is not really what Paterno wanted. If anything, Tate is regarded as the better passer, but he just wasn't moving the team, so he's got to go to Rakowski. There's Tate, who started and played the whole first half and the initial part of the third quarter. I think they've both done rather well. Uh, the offensive line has not been able to block, and that's been their biggest problem this afternoon. There's another example There it is it. again, sure. Matt Suey, very few times in his career has he been bottled up like he's been today. That's right. And you know, that's where the games are won, and there's no question about it. The offensive line of Nebraska has been superior, and the defensive line certainly has. Here's Suey, gets the ball, and before he can move out of his tracks, I believe it's Odious Lee, nails it. Third down and five, Penn State at the 28 yard line. Clock running, 7 10 to play. Warner, and it's all he can do to keep possession. Well, they were trying an option, and Lukowski got the ball away too soon. He, he really didn't option anybody. Warner didn't have a chance and bobbled the ball. And, of course, they wind up with this lost yardage, and that's not going to help the rushing statistics for him, which are already dismal. Jack Amaro into punt. There's one guy that can really boot it. He's having a nice day. Fair catch. 
Brown at the 43-yard line. But Nebraska has it back, and they can go to work on the clock now. Well, I think you'll see some possible substitutions coming in here. Six minutes and 31 seconds remaining in Lincoln. It's Nebraska 35 and the Nittany Lions 17. Tough day for Joe. 631 remaining. Remember, Penn State led 14 to nothing early in the game, but Nebraska had an explosive second quarter. Led 28-14 at the half. And they've stretched that advantage to 35 to 17 as Nebraska takes over after the Giacomero punt. Cornhuskers at their own 44-yard line. Hager has gone all the way. This is Jarvis Redwine. He's going to run out of gas. Now's about the right time with an 18-point lead. <laughs> yeah. A little more than six to play. We'll have all the scores for you following the game on our Prudential College scoreboard. So stay tuned. And then at 4 o'clock Eastern time from the Coliseum, Ohio State, 3-0 against the Bruins of UCLA, 2-1. Pac-10 in the Big Ten. Going to be a good one. Second and 11. Steers is in motion. And Redwine gives it back to Hager. Over the middle he goes to Smith to the 42. So Tom Osborne going to the back of the playbook. John Walsh making the tackle. I thought they'd keep it on the ground a little bit. We caught some. But he's uh, turned it loose. The little gadget on there. Bigger in the crowd paid for 60 minutes of football, they're going to get it. <laughs> I'll tell you, they were rather quiet with that 14 to nothing deficit there for a while. Red line. Giuseppe Harris came up to make the tackle at the 38 yard line. First guy's got a tough time bringing that red line down. Ran right into the arms of the tackler and he was out of it before he could blink your eyes. Total yardage. Nebraska closing in on the 500 mark. Well, I'll tell you, that is going against a good football team in Penn State. Make that kind of yardage. Second down, seven. Red wine. 38 yard line. So Nebraska now effectively eating away the remaining time. 4.35 to go. Lance Mel making the tackle. We'll be selecting our Chevrolet most valuable players shortly. Got a lot of guys to choose from as far as the Cornhuskers are concerned. Several have had big days. Interesting. Penn State going to lose for the second time in a row for the first time in three years. Third and six. Uh -oh. Red wine, he's got a lot of room. To the 24-yard line, and it's Giuseppe Harris again in on the tackle. Hey, they'll run on the option. They've got run action passes. They'll get a very versatile attack. Best I've seen in a long time, really. Vintage red wine, huh? Vintage red wine? Mm. <laughs> that's, not the first, that's not the first time that's been used, and it ain't the last either, Coach. Uh, oh, I am hip. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> first down from the 24. <laughs> Jarvis, we'll just call him Jarvis. He takes it to the 21. Rick Donaldson making the tackle. You need a name like that. It gets you more exposure. There's no question about it. <laughs> name like Jarvis Redwine, I am him. There he goes, off the field here, getting a great hand. Oh, he had a great day. And a new quarterback also, Jeff Quinn, comes in replacing Hager, who did a whale of a job. I am hip. Has had a big day today. Well, Redwine has been the big man out of the backfield. Quinn. Kuhlman wrestles him down at the 23-yard line. And the clock keeps running. 
with a couple of ticks over three minutes to play. 35-17, Nebraska. So the Cornhuskers are going to be 3-0. and Penn State will be 1-2. and There is Jarvis Redwine. From Corvallis to Lincoln. Quite an afternoon. Third and nine. Comes back the other way to Smith. To the seven yard line. Joel Coles had a chance to get him and stop him early, but couldn't. Misdirection pass. He fakes the ball to the right, steps back. And there is Smith, just a little looking pattern. Defender is clear off of him. There's Joel Coles. And he's run out of bounds at the seven. First and goal. Craig Johnson. Yard or so. They had some kind words about him also yesterday. Sure. He had a great Johnson. day last week against Iowa. Yeah. This is the third team back we're talking about. Craig Johnson, number 30. He got some good depth at that running back spot. Good skill positions, good receivers, and certainly Hager finally has put together an untracked passing game that they had. Quinn spelling Hager now as he tries to move them in. And through the middle, touchdown. Tim Quintera, number 44, on his first carry of the day. The third team fullback going in for the Huskers. Well, not only has Nebraska sold this one away, but they have done it most convincingly. We're looking at the same trap play, and this is the third touchdown that they have scored with it. Franklin scored. Worth scored. We're looking across this team. The third string fullback comes in here. Jim Coulter, I guess it is. He scores. Shilkov's kick is good. He is six for six on points after. A minute 55 to play. Nebraska leading by 25. Jim Cotera, one carry today, one touchdown today. 42 to 17, Nebraska. A minute 55 to go. Kevin Seibel kicking off. And Kurt Warner can't handle it. So the Nebraska Cornhuskers handed it to Penn State today. Here's the last touchdown from inside the five. Successful trap that has been run all day. Right tackle comes down, the right guard comes across and wipes out the backers. Look how clean that is in there. The Terra scores. All right. First down, Penn State. At the 20 yard line, Rakowski. Incomplete. Mike Mead, the intended receiver. That's about what's happened today. That graphic, the cartoon illustrating it, a minute 51. Remaining, Penn State led 14-0 early. But the Cornhuskers, fifth in one pole and sixth in the other. And they will be at least that high next week. Moore gets out to the 26. Where Sammy Sims makes the tackle. I think the most impressive thing uh, about the Cornhuskers beyond their multiple attack has been that tremendous uh, performance by Hager and the improvement of their passing game. A varied offense. They took care of Utah State handily in their opener. Then last week, maybe looking ahead. They had to scramble and scratch to take care of Iowa, but they have dominated today. Rakowski will have to keep it. Moves to the outside. It's a nice block from Moore and then is run out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Shy of the first down. So the clock stopped. A minute nine. 
remaining. Well, our most valuable player, our Chevy MVP for Nebraska today. We have had a lot of fellas to think about. But I think we're going to go with the quarterback, Tim Hager. There he is, Tim Hager. Made his first start of the season today. And for Penn State, we will go with the linebacker, Griffiths. A disappointed fellow right now, but Steve has had himself a good individual afternoon. We'll be right back. On ABC's Wide World of Sports, high speed airpin turns and no brakes. Top riders compete in the World Speedway Motorcycle Championships next Saturday. Winding down in Lincoln, Nebraska, 109 to go. Nebraska out on top, 42 to 17. Penn State, fourth down and one from their own 29-yard line. So obviously in this situation, nothing to lose. They're going for it. And it looked like Nebraska jumped off. They get the first down anyway, if indeed it was Nebraska guilty of the infraction. Out to the 32-yard line with David Clark was there. Penalty against Nebraska. You know, uh, Al, just to go, there's a shot of Joe Paterno a year ago, the leading defensive team in the nation, and it just goes to show you how, the loss of personnel, even though he had Clark and Millen back and Mel back and uh, several others, or still key people that you lose, you got to rebuild each year, and you never know until you play the next season just how good you're going to be, and there's no question about it, they have been hurt defensively. A lot of people thought Joe was crying wolf, but maybe not. Rukowski pitches back to Booker Moore, and he's run out of bounds at the 36 by Sammy Sims. A lot of folks have a tendency to feel that with our Prudential College scoreboard coming up, we'll bring you all the scores that maybe Paterno was just giving it the old song and dance uh, when Joe was saying, hey, you know, I got a lot of holes to fill, a lot of things to think about, and there was a tendency on a lot of folks part to say oh you know what's he talking about he's coming off a near national championship season well a tip off I think was last week when Curtis Dickey managed 184 yards and a 69 yarder a 21 yarder 11 yarder and as I said at the top of the show that the key to this was going to be oh there was an interception there the key would be the performance of the defense of Penn State and here of course is another turnover in the game Dan Lindstrom the interception in the waning seconds with 43 seconds remaining. Well, they're still trying, putting the ball up in the air. And this is very poorly thrown. You can see that the, the defender is far in better position than the receiver. Dan Lindstrom with the interception as Nebraska takes over at the 49-yard line. As they get the subs in, Randy Landwerk takes it to the 42-yard line. Mark Maurer getting in some experience at quarterback. So Osborne trying to get everybody a little bit of exposure here. This one is in the books. 20 seconds remaining, which should be the final play of the game. A most impressive Nebraska victory. And down to the 41. Dennis Rogan, the fourth team I back. That'll do it. Crowd counts it down. It's all over in Lincoln. Where the Nebraska Cornhuskers have defeated Penn State very convincingly. Final score, 42 to 17. Great job today by our statistician, George Hill, our spotter, Kelly Hayes. Thank you, gentlemen. Final score was 42 to 17. Nebraska, Tom Osborne has himself a pretty good team. You know, Harry, he was saying before the game, he really doesn't know what to think after the first two games. He knew he'd get a pretty good indication today. He's got to be a very happy man. Yeah, you know, this guy is a real super class guy. And in addition to that, you look at his record. This is going into his seventh year. And in no season has he ever won less than nine games here. His record in bowls is four and two. He's taken them to all the balls, the orange, the sugar, the cotton. Fiesta, you know, he's been around a little bit and uh, has one of the winningest records. Uh, you were really matching two giants as far as a coaching professional is concerned. I think he has to be enormously pleased on the performance of Hager. He started, and I think that's a real success story. This guy, you know, you can get pretty doggone discouraged being number five as far as the, uh, uh, number five as far as the spring practices were concerned. So that's quite a comeback for him.
Well, that'll do it from Lincoln. The executive producer of NCAA College Football is Rune Arledge. Senior producer, Chuck Howard. Today's coverage of the Penn State-Nebraska game was produced by Bob Goodrich and directed by Jim Jeanette. Technical director, Les Weiss. Associate director, Vince D'Addario. Now, this is Al Michaels along with Ara Parsigian saying so long from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Be sure to stay tuned next for the Prudential College scoreboard. Then on NCAA football, the second half of our doubleheader, the Buckeyes of Ohio State take on the UCLA Bruins at 4 Eastern time. NCAA College football, Penn State and Nebraska, brought to you by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers coast to coast. And by Mr. Goodrench and the General Motors Parts Division, who help you keep that great GM feeling with genuine GM parts. Travel arrangements made through promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United is building the largest airline in the world around you. This has been a presentation of the leader, ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics.